Hi guys, you ready for this? We're gonna do our seitan nuggets for some souvlaki that I'll be making this week. So, in here, I've got my one and a quarter cup of vital wheat gluten, three tablespoons of chickpea flour, and two tablespoons of nutritional yeast. And then in here, which is my herbs, I have a teaspoon of paprika, I have a teaspoon of sage, which kind of gives it a gamey taste, really. Um, a heaping teaspoon of garlic powder, two rounded teaspoons of onion powder, a half a teaspoon of salt, and a quarter teaspoon of white pepper. So those are our herbs. In my food processor, I have three quarters of a cup of cold water, um, a tablespoon of soy sauce, and a tablespoon of coconut oil that I've just processed together. And obviously the coconut oil doesn't break down because it's a solid. So um, it stays solid when it's cold. So it kind of looks a little funky in there, <laughs> but um, your seitan does need some fat. So I'm adding a tablespoon of that. Um, on my stove, I already have simmering four cups of mushroom stock and four cups of regular water as well as a quarter cup of um, soy sauce. So I'm gonna put this all together, really easy. You're gonna love this. All right, so we're gonna mix our herbs and our seitan, uh, our vital wheat gluten together in the bowl. We're just gonna give it a whisk. A whisk. <laughs> I can't speak today. A whisk to incorporate everything. And this is really the easiest recipe ever. Okay, so everything's well incorporated there. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pop it into the food processor here, like this. My daughters are playing dress up in the basement, so they're, I hear them clickety clacking in their pretend heels. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy on me. These girls are gonna make me lose hair. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna take this out because. I really don't need that. There we go. All right. Now I'm gonna let this run. I'm gonna let this run for quite a little bit just so that the gluten can develop because that's where that bite is gonna come from. Doesn't make food processors sound healthy. <laughs> All right. Oh my gosh, this smells so good. I'm so excited. Okay, so now I'm just gonna turn this out because you're gonna want to develop that gluten even further. I'm just gonna take all this stuff off here. Like so. And we're going to I don't like to waste anything, so let me just try to scrape this off the sides here. <laughs> They're singing Christmas songs. They're so funny. All right, so that can go in the sink. And now basically you're gonna knead this like you're kneading dough. And you want it to become as elastic as possible because that means that the gluten has been developed and it's going to have a nice bite once it's cooked. It's gonna feel like you've got something under your teeth. 
Now, what I really, the question that I get often is why do you put so many herbs in your food? Or so much rather, like I put two rounded teaspoons of onion powder. Um, you want your food to taste good. You really do. If, you're, if you've just got your, your gluten, I mean, it's going to taste like gluten. You want it to taste of something. So that is why I add so many herbs to my gluten. Another question I get often is, if you're vegan, why do you want food that tastes like meat? Look, I didn't go vegan because I didn't like the taste of meat. I loved the taste of meat. I went vegan because I couldn't kill anything anymore. Even if I didn't do it directly, I was still doing it and I couldn't do it anymore. So it has nothing to do with being ve <laughs> vegan. Um, I also live with a husband and a son who are not 100% vegan and you know, I could eat beans and salad every day. It doesn't bother me. I love beans and salad, you know? I love tofu, I love all that stuff. Um, but it's easier for them. You know, my stepson goes to his mom's every third weekend. He does live with us and, you know, she's not vegan, so it's hard for him. Um, and she's, you know, his mom, so her house, her rules. She won't listen to me, that's for sure. Um, so I can't expect her to keep him vegan uh, over there. And he, you know, that's his mom. He's 11 years old. I told him, when you're older, you can make the choice that you want to make. I, I see that he, he has moral issues with it, you know? And he loves my cooking, he loves it a lot. Uh, but they eat a lot of packaged stuff over there, so it, it's hard for him. Um, they do eat 100% vegan at home. I don't cook any meat. I won't even bring it in the house. So um, that is why I do like to make things that are familiar to them because it helps to ease them into it. And you know, I'm hoping that one day it'll be 100% vegan <laughs> for the both of them. Um, but they love my cooking and they do eat vegan as much as possible. And my husband has been making healthier choices during the day at work, which makes me really happy. Um, my son as well. So, um, yeah, that's why I make all of these seitans and sausages. Um, I will be making those soon. Those are fun. I love making sausages. Meatballs that have no meat in them. Um, we had those yesterday for dinner and I make them from scratch and it's, I've perfected my recipe. I could fool a meat eater. Um, I did actually, my son's friend came over for dinner and he, uh, he sat down and he started eating the pasta and the meatballs and he was like, wow, this is the best pasta I've ever had. And these meatballs are so great. So I of course waited until he finished the whole plate and said, not bad for meatballs that aren't made with any meat. He seemed a little surprised. You know you're good when you're good. So, um, yeah, that's, that's why I do this. Otherwise, I mean, I, I myself eat a lot of salads and a lot of fruit, a lot of vegetables. I try to eat raw during the day because um, it's just better for you. When you cook food, you cook out the nutrients. and So I try to eat as raw as possible during the day. But if there's leftovers, I will consume those because I don't want them to go bad. Being a mom, I'm all about not wasting anything. And I really don't waste anything. Like that beautiful basil plant my husband got me. Well, it died. Don't ask me why. But it just started to wilt on me. So... What I did was I cut off all the fronds and I left some leaves at the base 
because I am going to try to grow it back. But I made pesto out of it. I should have made a video actually. Next time. Next time. Um, but I don't waste anything. I really don't like to waste anything. I came from an, an upbringing where if you wasted, you know, my parents worked hard for what we had. And same thing with my grandparents. They came from Italy with pennies in their pockets. And you just didn't waste anything in the house, especially food, because food was a precious commodity to them when they were in Italy. They came here to Montreal in 1952, I believe. And, uh, you know, it was hard for them. They struggled. So we learned that you just don't waste. And it carried with me. I don't like wasting. All right. So now that my vital wheat gluten looks like this, this give it a little spank. I love it. <laughs> um, I'm going to let this rest for about, I'd say 10 minutes. And when we come back, I am going to show you how I process it and put it into my stock, which is simmering, simmering right now. And then I will show you the finished product and it's going to be okay, delicious. guys, here we are. So now we're going to cut up our seitan into little bite sizes and drop it into our woo, <laughs> simmering broth, which smells really good. All right, so here it is. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to actually take my cutting board, right? I know you can't see this really. I'll do it over here on the stove. How about that? So we're gonna just take our seitan and we're gonna just cut it like this. Um, careful, it does stick together. You don't want it to stick together. But we're going to cut it like this. I wish you could smell it. It already smells really delicious. Um, so now that this is cut up, I'm going to take the pieces and just break them. They don't have to look perfect. And you drop them into the broth. Your broth should be simmering. See, another piece. You can use any kind of stock you want for your broth, really. Um, but I find that mushroom gives it a really earthy flavor, which I like. Um, you can use vegetable broth or, you know, if you want a more, um, more of a poultry-like flavor, you can use some vegetarian, or vegetarian, well, vegan um, uh, chicken stock which I do believe Better Than Bouillon makes. And I really love Better Than Bouillon. It's, it's the mushroom stock that I do use. Um, and if I'm not making my own vegetable stock, I do use their vegetable stock. I find it to be superior. And um, yeah, that's, uh, that's basically what I do there. Alright, so now what we're going to do is we're going to cover it and let it simmer for 45 minutes. Normally I put it in my crock pot and I let it go for about 10 hours. I just find it gives the texture um, more of a bite um, the longer that you cook it. Um, you don't want to lose any of your liquid in the pot so you only go 45 minutes when you're doing it on the stove. But I like to go 10 hours in the crock pot. Um, I'm doing it on the stove top today because I want to show you what it looks like. But initially I do do it in my crock pot and I let it go. I just let it go. But how easy is this, right? I mean, you pulse it on the food processor and then you break it up and put it in your broth and you simmer it 45 minutes and that's it. 
So I'm going to come back later and I'm going to show you what it looks like. And I'm even going to sample it for you because yum, yum, yum. And, um, and that's it. Hi, everybody. All right, so our seitan has cooled down. And I've put it in a Tupperware with the broth. It smells really good. And I'm going to just show you what it looks like. Look at that. Here it is. You can squeeze the liquid out. It's a little spongy, but once you cook it, it gets quite firm. So that's what your seitan looks like. And you, it's very versatile. You can use it for a lot of things. You can um, actually bread this and you can fry them into nuggets for your children. It's about that shape and size, right? And it's, it's very tasty. You can use it in stews. You can use it in, um, like I said, souvlaki, which is what we're gonna be doing this week. And it's very tasty. If you break off a piece here, that's really good. I love this stuff. And it's a protein punch. Really good for you. So that's how you make seitan. And you can do it in the shape of a roast as well. Um, I do that a little differently, but I can make a, a video for that as well one day. For now, we're doing this. And it's quite uh, quite delicious. So I hope you try the recipe. Let me know if you do. Don't forget to subscribe. And um, I'll see you soon.